All right, hello there. Whatever humans find their way to this particular video. Today I would just like to discuss a recent psilocybin experience of mine. It was uh, about two months ago now, and it was a relatively high dose, just say just over four dried grams of psilocybin cubensis. And um, it was quite interesting to say the least. Um, I'd like to just preface this video and say that I don't recommend anyone take psilocybin-containing mushrooms. Uh, I think that, that there are definitely risks involved, and it's just... Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit more later in the video, but it, it's no light decision, and yeah, I definitely don't recommend, and I'm not endorsing that anyone do that. This video is just purely for um, educational purposes and just to explain what I experienced in particular, and um, yeah, my subjective take on... On a, on a profound psychedelic journey. Yeah, so the, the set and setting, which obviously I think is, is, is pretty critically important. What I've found now, I'm 25 years of age. I started experimenting with psychedelics when I was about, you know, 16 or something, too young in my opinion now, but, and that was with LSD and things like that. And throughout the course of my experimentation with them, which it's through certain periods has been quite heavy and through other periods has been years of abstinence, um, I found the, 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 the setting that works best for me for how I like to use them and how I think they have an overall net positive impact on a life. Um, well, that's kind of hard to say, but in general, I think that they're a, a useful tool in settings that are solitude, prefer, pre, the, the ideal setting for me at this point in my life, I think, is is having a, 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 a psychedelically experienced sitter nearby or in a separate room, and they're available for support if necessary. They're not integrated into the journey, they don't probe or question or, or protrude or intrude, but they are there and available and emotionally available to be present with you if need be. Because sometimes you can definitely hit rough and difficult spots throughout these journeys where you do need someone who is preferably psychedelic experienced um, and not psychedelics naive. And, and, and I think that is the, is the ideal setting where no one else is going to bother you and you have support there if you need it and you're in a safe setting, obviously. And I only recommend compounds where you know exactly what they are if, they, if that's uh, like a a forage fungus that whether you've, you've had it professionally identified and and um if it's any other chemical you've tested it with the with the um relevant drug testing kits so on this particular experience just over four grams of psilocybin cubensis ingested um lay down wait quietly and um normally about 20 25 minutes I, I start to feel it and I start to feel it as kind of a peculiar mental drifting and then I experience um, <clears throat> kind of like a feeling like you're traveling through a tunnel like you're starting to get some kind of momentum behind closed eyes and also um, what I've come to, to know as the tryptamine buzz which is a, a vibration feels like a, a rising in energy all throughout the body. You can sometimes physically hear it, but you can it's more of a, a tactile zzzz, and it raises. And as it gets to its peak, uh, there's a subjective sense and experience of, of one leaving one's body. And that's definitely what I encountered this time. So, you know, 25, 35, 40 minutes, 45 minutes normally for me, and I'm, I'm pretty well there. And around about that time for me, the, the buzzing, buzzing, buzzing came up and then all of a sudden just complete quiet. I dropped into a space. I didn't so much feel like I moved out of my body this time as a just, uh, I moved into a separate, like a separate way of experiencing the world that was disconnected from, from my body. And, and I noticed that by sometimes the, the sounds of the outside world die away. I've experienced that before with ayahuasca and things like that, where it's like the heartbeat, the humdrum, the creak and the clunks of, of kind of mundane existence. Just And sometimes, yeah, as I said, sometimes you travel out with that, but this time it was just like a splitting apart a little bit. 
and this is where it starts to get crazy and obviously if you've if you've not dabbled with high dose psychedelics this is going to sound like nonsense to you and i completely understand it would sound like nonsense to me had i not experienced it directly so as soon as that happened there was an entity there right there on me from the start seemed like a it was like a mantis is the only word that i can really describe an insectoid it didn't have its um whatever you call those wielding it wasn't wielding nose at me but it was just its head right up almost nose to nose with me not that it had the same sort of nose but face right there and it was a strange kind of greeting it was like what you'd expect if in a peculiar circumstance in real life, you know, like a surprise party or, or someone shows up in a place where you wouldn't normally expect them and they kind of try to calm you down really quick. Like, hey, hey, oh, sh sh sorry, sh 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 it's all right, it's all right, just listen, hear me out. And it was kind of like that and it was this mantis entity that was right there nose to nose with me and it was just telepathically, of course, as I mentioned, it gets weirder and weirder from here on out. Telepathically, it communicated that you're okay, I'm right here, don't be alarmed, but I am here with you, and um, it's going to be alright, but I'm here, you know, don't freak out on me, and, and it was just like a incredibly strange, it was a feminine feeling insectoid entity, mantis type entity, and it was very loving and nurturing, I very much felt like it cared for me deeply, in, 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 in so much as an interdimensional, interdimensional mantis can, but um... It was, it was right there, and it was right on me, and um, as I said, this is a couple of months ago, so some details are a little bit hazy, so bear with me here, but, and each time, it's, it's, it's with psychedelics, it definitely does drop away in a dreamlike way, as in, it, it's, it's only the most intense right there, and then as soon as you're out of that, and you're trying to recollect it, and it just falls through your fingers. I think it was Terence McKenna who said it falls through your fingers like gold dust or something. As soon as your feet hit the floor, it has that dream-like quality to it. And I've definitely experienced that as well. But the mantis entity was there. It kind of tried to calm me down and subdue me a little bit. And um, then it just... It just unfolds on you like a this kind of presence it's like a jellyfish or like a sheet it's like you're here laying down in it like settles in all around you it almost feels like a like a love making sort of ritual the way that because there's entities in there and but there's an overall presence and it feels like a mind or an intelligence that's like a jellyfish uh tendril like a i get on one particular trip i had the, the 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 mental image of like a clownfish and an anemone like a it's a symbiosis almost but it's like a it's almost like a like a like a coitus like a sexual type of union and there's like a symbiosis is 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 being rediscovered or discovered or initiated and that kind of settles in around you and then there's just visions that are just indescribable with language. Just complex, throbbing, vibrant, kind of orgasmic, psychedelic patterns. There's often a, a, an erotic or a sexual undertone for me at certain stages throughout that. Like, I felt like that was being offered almost at certain stages throughout this. It's, it's, it's a very erotic, deep, intimate kind of thing, a high-dose psychedelic experience when you really give yourself over to it. And as I was in silent darkness and it just settled in around me and this the incredibly complex visions just very much feels like you contact god you know just like a, a very deep and profound sense of of connection and 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 just i was in a little bit of a dark psychological state before i took them i kind of almost use them now as as somewhat of a medicinal kind of a way to reset my psychological organization and and um get out of the rigid I can I'm very prone to rigid obsessive type thinking and very intellectualized very fixed in the mind and I can miss a lot of the richness and a lot of the beauty of reality because of that and I like to take them as a reset on that and just st throughout this experience you know I've, I'm just uttering things to myself like uh, it's so sacred to be and I'm so grateful just to be alive and to be able to experience and just to be here just to be something you know just to 
and this not caught in the mind at all, very deeply rooted in the present moment. And this is this is now what I think the main utility of the psychedelic experience is. It's it's that there's been studies, you know, uh, I'll, I'll link a lot of information below in terms of the Roland Griffiths, the, the John Hopkins, the Robin Carhart Harris, this kind of body of, this is how I think is the correct way to interpret the psychedelic experience. The Entropic Brain, the paper by Robin Carhart Harris is super interesting and I think is, is, is very relevant in a lot of ways. And, um... It's, it's this powering down of the default mode network. The default mode network is psych, kind of psychologically how, how you experience and interpret your sense of self and you filter the world through that sense of self. You know what I mean? Like um, for me personally, it's like, what is Brady doing today? And what have I done? And where have I come from? And where will I go? And, and if you look at most of your cognitive activity, it is, you know, the default mode network, which is responsible for kind of psychological time travel, you know what I mean? It's it's projecting into the past, into the future, and rumination, and, and self-referential, what did I do, and what will I do, and what did I eat, and where am I going, and, and how did he say that to me? And this self-referential type of thinking is is largely useless i think and 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 by someone from someone like me and from my perspective it's experienced as a as a massive detriment to to overall well-being like i just want to be present in the moment you know what i mean the fact is that as much as i can because we're all going to die and you have this limited slice of experience here on earth and if you spend that projected into the past or projected into and fractured your attention fractured into futures that might not exist and probably won't exist and potential sources of suffering and it's it really i think takes away from the quality of your life and the richness of your life and i think that you know all we have is what's happening now and you know very cliche and very easy to say but i feel like that's the quest that 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 i've been on and a lot of people are on and i feel like that's the psychedelics definitely facilitate uh, expansion in that regard because they force awareness onto you, you know, and like and like the work that's been done with their incredible uh, efficacy to 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 modulate and and destroy addictive patterns of behavior and things like that. This is all mediated, I think, through an increase in awareness, and it, they make you blindingly aware of things. And when you're in an addictive pattern, that's your 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 awareness is contracted. You know what I mean. You're just like I need these drugs to get through the day, or I need this substance or this situation or this behavior to get through. And you've got a contracted awareness. Psychedelics make you much much more aware. You know they used to call them consciousness expanding drugs, and I think this is the main mechanism. Once you blast it out from underneath that rock of your addictive pattern or whatever it was, you can't go back in the same way. And that's how I've experienced them throughout my substance and behavioral addictions throughout life, which there have been many, you know what I mean? And I've experienced it as an inability to go back and hide in those patterns of behavior or those substances or whatever it is in the same way, which for a net for 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 uh, and the the interaction like the net gain for a life is massive but in the short term it can be experienced as incredibly unpleasant and and i think that in the in the periods the the short term periods following a profound psychedelic experience you can often get thought patterns of like man i wish i didn't do that and it can almost exacerbate psychological issues and i think this underlies the same mechanism behind schizophrenia and other psychological issues like i could definitely see it erodes away your coping mechanisms because if you look at well, fundamentally what a coping mechanism is, is it's a way of remaining unaware. You know, it's it's a way of re- remaining in relationship to reality in a way that's not maybe true to reality but helps you function in a specific way. And these are sometimes useful for us. You know, like say if someone has a schizophrenic kind of psychological propensities. And, and, and genetic potentials. And if they've found a way of uh, boxing reality in, in a way that they can function within it and not, you know, if, if in this society they'd need to be hospitalized or, or excluded or, or, you know, or made peripheral in some profound way, if they found a way of boxing that in so that they can function in the world and maybe have a job and a partner and things like that, that may be something that you don't want to fuck with, you know what I mean? Until we have, until such a time that we have better resources or, or capabilities of, of dealing with that. You know, so 
and you know, with m profound mood disorders and things like that, I think I might have a bit of mood disorder going on, but nothing that is, is experienced as kind of profound and acute mania. You know, some people that have, you know, bipolar or on the, on the, on the spectrum there somewhere, if you get a, acute periods of mania, psychedelics would be something that I'd definitely probably say stay away from because they can precipitate all of that coming forth and you being made acutely aware of and maybe even potentially instigating your next manic episode might happen now and you might be so blindingly aware of it that it might be the worst one you've ever experienced and you know that's when you get sometimes people with the, those kind of mood disorders who you know jump off things and think that they can fly and things like that so they're definitely a very very powerful and unique tool for dramatically increasing awareness but for someone like me I want that because the 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 other side of of the of the scale there is me being so contracted and caught up in my own ruminations and my own intellect that I can poison the world. You know what I mean? And really miss the forest for the trees, and 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 really spend so much time in those psychological trees in my life that 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 I that I miss the point and 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 think about myself too much when it's not about me. You know, it's about the way that you interact and your interactions and the way that you fit within the larger community or society. So this is what I think the main utility of psychedelics are. And after that. You know that bit that's indescribable. This the, the the entity kind of settles down on me, and just this flash of incredibly vivid and beautiful imagery, and orgasmic feelings, and patterns and colors, and you're up there with God. You know, you're up there with the 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 energies of the universe, pure potentiality, and things are just pouring out and through you and into you, and you can talk to it and communicate with it, and. It's profound and beautiful, but it's indescribable. And a couple of monkey mouth noises I can string together aren't going to bring you any closer to it. It's something that has to be experienced subjectively. But after that peak wears off, and this is where I think it's very interesting, you get that you very much become able to play with the state of the default mode network being offline. And as I said before, I'm going to link the resources. You can check this out. This is the model through... I've had a number of high dose psychedelic experiences and this is the model that I think makes the most sense and will make the most sense going into the future is that powers down the default mode network of your brain and when that's down you don't have the self referential narrative you're not in, in, you're not over you're not overlaying your sense of self and subjectivity to to reality you're just purely experiencing it and, you know, I spent some time with, with my sitter, who, who's an intimate person in my life, and was just able to really appreciate this reality. It's enlightenment. It really is try before you buy enlightenment. And the studies have shown this through long-term meditators permanently have their default mode network, has a lot less blood supply, and I think even in some cases is completely offline all the time. And then it's shown that in experienced meditators, during meditation, the blood supply to the default mode network drops down. And during psilocybin, high-dose psilocybin, it drops right off as well. So this is the state that you're entering. This is the enlightenment state, I believe, personally, and from what I've read and experienced. It's enlightenment that you can experience through um, high doses of the tryptamine hallucinogens. And specifically, I've experienced it on psilocybin. I didn't so much get it with ayahuasca. Um, I haven't gotten it through well yeah smoke dmt is another beast entirely i've not broken through completely with that way but psilocybin seems to be the most because it's essentially just a nature's version of an orally active dmt and that really produces the the, the narrative turns off reality comes to life nature comes to life you know i was looking out at the stars but i've also looked out at nature during the day and things like that and you can see the fluid life of nature and and, and vision is a communication all the senses are engaged in a synesthetic kind of beautiful experience of reality and just grateful for being and no thoughts of you know oh how long is this going to last and what's this you know as you start to come down and, you know, you start to reintegrate and, and things like that and you can start to think of, you know, I get the thoughts of, you know, people like, oh, you get stuck in a trip, man. It's like, fuck, if this could last forever, I'd really love it, you know, because it's it's a beautiful state. And, you know, I'm trying to get stable meditation practice erect, er, erected. I've done that for years and I've had very lightly similar experiences through meditation being that, 
you know, an, a dramatic increase in awareness that even with meditation, I've kind of thought, oh, this is a bit scary. You know, I, I got more than I bargained for here. So both modalities increase awareness. And I think both modalities have the same end goal. But for someone who's analytical and, and very much grounded in the intellect like me, I would never have believed that such a state would exist. You know, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm not, but I thought those people that, that, tout that enlightenment is possible and, and the cessation of thought and non-duality and these things, that, that, that that's kind of airy-fairy bullshit. But I've experienced it now a number of times through the, through the, the use of various powerful pharmacological tools like psilocybin. And um, it's just an incredibly beautiful state. It's something that I think a lot of people should experience. But, and here's where I think is an important thing to preface, is that while these substances are incredibly uh, psychologically... psychologically beneficial long term and the key being long term there because short term you know when I was younger and things like that and these broke up my addictive patterns I remember distinctly having thoughts of fuck I wish I never did this because now I can't be the person who I was you know and then that can be very destabilizing and these experiences can be quite destabilizing like just with me personally from this last experience it's been two months now and I don't still don't feel the same psychologically. And that's not necessarily the worst thing because as I said, I was in I have the tendency to get in kind of dark and uncomfortable mind spaces for long periods of time due to overthinking. But I'm not the same psychologically as I was before that, you know, and it's not all ro like, you know, sunshine and roses either. You know, the, the these substances and I've been looking more into this as of this experience that derealization, depersonalization in the non-dual and the and the kind of enlightenment, like the, the spiritual, which I don't really like the word spiritual, but inside those kind of sects, they talk about the dark night of the soul with meditation and things like that. Psychedelics are like a fucking canon. And you can encounter these same sort of uh, precarious psychological states. Like I've felt a kind of altered sense of where you sit in your head because I turned that off, you know, as it recrystallized and, and, and reconcrested and all the kind of emergent phenomena and layers of psyche kind of built themselves back up, it's just experienced differently to me now. And, and it almost feels like a bit, a little bit di disorientating and almost like a dizziness, which is definitely not a dizzy as in it's, 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 but it's, it's hard to, it's kind of like a, an altered sensation of head and, and space. And, and these kind of things, I think along with, you know, hallucinogen perception, persisting disorder, I've had bouts of that and things like that, mostly with LSD and other shit that probably wasn't LSD back in the day and precipitated by intense cannabis use, which I no longer use and abuse now. It's been years and years, but there is risks you know so what you know what i've said at the start isn't just kind of pissing up a rope it, it is it, it, these are profound tools and your life won't be the same after you use high dose um tryptamine hallucinogen specifically so it's something worth thinking about you know that you you shouldn't go into this lightly and it isn't a joke you know it's it's not a joke and you know Maybe in, in a couple of months, you know, uh, my, my kind of psychological organization will clamp back down and be how it was before, which, you know, as, I'm, as I said, I'm not necessarily ecstatic towards. I'm meditating and doing everything that I can to make sure that that doesn't happen. But it's not all pleasant either. But I like, I, I like the increased awareness and I knew what I was in for because I've got experience with these things. And even knowing what I was in for and having lots of experience and having had some of the long-term implications before, like bouts of hallucinogen perception, persistent disorder, and and also my, my vision is never really completely the same since I really delved into psychedelics, but it's not experienced at all in a negative way to me now. But there was periods where MDMA as well seemed to uh, precipitate some sort of change in visual space that was, was fairly long-lasting. But yeah, these, these compounds aren't to be messed with, you know what I mean? And And they can be scary and they can leave you in places. You have to be a brave, psychologically serious explorer to do this. You know what I mean? Because I could easily end up in a state that was net negative to where I was, which was already, you know, not in, in a great, you know, completely blindingly positive space to begin with. You know what I mean? So you're on your own here. And you, while it's being studied and things like that, you know, Roland Griffiths isn't going to come and and sit with you, you know, and help you through your your fractured psychological organization in the in the wake of a, of a high dose psychedelic experience so i'll link below these resources i think it's a very interesting area and i think that these experiences are have been absolutely pivotal in me even you know potentially being alive now you know 
and and things like that. So I thank the psychedelics, and and it's an absolutely un unimaginably complex and beautiful dimension there. I think we're only just scratching the surface of understanding what that is, whether that's a, you know, an archetypal psychological space or whether that's a real external space with inhabited by entities and, you know, like it feels like subjectively or who knows, you know, but I just mean tread carefully. Don't go into any of this lightly. Only go in if you are happy to kind of roll the dice with your psychological organization in a sense, you know, but it, 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 you know, for people that, and this is often what I think is their most valuable use case is like, if people are in really dark spots, like if you're, and you know, this might sound crazy to some people, but I think that's where they're the most concrete uh, use cases at the moment for high dose psychedelic experiences is like, you will not kill yourself under certain, well, it's hard to even, but for really acute psychological disturbances and like the end of life anxiety and things like that, where, you know, you've tried all the antidepressants and, and you're really at the end of your rope, I think, yeah, these experiences are going to be net positive in, in pretty clearly. But for for younger people and people who, who are much more neuroplastic and things like that, these will cause changes, you know what I mean? Maybe on the scale of a couple of years of meditation, but, you know, maybe changes that you weren't ready for or that completely destabilize you, you know, or make you lose your job or, or your spouse or, you know, or, or change your life and destabilize you in a drastic way. So be careful. But yeah, I just thought I just thought I'd say that while I am enthusiastic and passionate about these things, that, that this is it's it's uncharted territory, you know what I mean? So it's it definitely, you know, you're taking your 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 psyche and, and your life into your own hands and, and you're you're stepping out into into deep, potentially dark, but very interesting waters. So just 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 be careful, and and I, I definitely don't recommend anyone jumps into any psychedelic experiences at a high dose, or even at a low dose, or in uh, um, less than ideal settings at all. I think that, that that can be quite dangerous, you know. But I'll link some resources below, and yeah, thanks for listening. I know this has gone on a bit long, but these are complex topics, you know, and it's, and it's it's a space that's very interesting for me, but. It's also, um, it's also, it's, it's complicated to talk about, you know what I mean? And I definitely, whether, you know, even though the, the community guidelines on YouTube and things like that, you know, I definitely can't recommend these things to people anyway, you know, but it's just the fact of it's, I'm being serious, you know, it's, it's a real powerful, powerful, very, very powerful tools, you know, and, and for exploration of, of what it means to be a human and what it means to be alive. But yeah, anyway, hit me up in the comments if you um, want to chat about any of that and um, peace out. Have a good one.